Paloids Podcast, Kyle here with Jeremiah, Pierre. We're talking about Ant Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, and of big course, spoiler gonna... warning, big big spoiler warning. Yeah, of course we're gonna just spoil the absolute shit out of it. Not that we already haven't. Yeah, Pierre, I'm refraining from talking. <laughs> okay, <laughs> your leaks were so spot on that the movie was mildly boring, and the after credit scenes were too exact that I almost felt we could have walked out. I quit listening to the episode when Pierre was about to dump the after credit scenes. I didn't get spoiled on that. That wasn't my idea. That was Kyle. I actually didn't find that leak. That was all Kyle. I wouldn't even know where the leaks come from. I'm making my own TikTok and I'm going to post how you texted me the leaks right. <laughs> and made me go over it. What were yeah. you guys thoughts the overall rating of the movie? 10 out of 10, Modox. 10 out of 10 cybernetically altered ants. It's all 10 out of 10 on me. So before the film started, I said to Pierre, because we sat next to each other, 6.2. I raised it to a 7.2 at the end of the movie, simply because of the performance of Kang the Conqueror. Jonathan Majors is, oh my God. Perfect. I could have just watched him yell and get mad and stand around looking at people for two hours. Seven on the nose. It's not a bad movie. It's just not a great movie. What's your favorite and least favorite part? 100% Jonathan Majors as Kang is a show stealer. I'm really excited for this next phase or the next few phases because he's going to be playing obviously different versions of Kang. We're getting a little ahead of ourselves. The after credit scene, which I'd love to discuss at Spoiler. length a little bit more. We didn't say it a hundred times already. Spoilers. Yeah. My favorite part by far, Jonathan Majors and my least favorite part by far was Modoc. Same. Besides the movie having a very generic and non-exciting plot. And Pierre, before you say anything, I want to say opposite for you. That should be your response because you loved Modoc so much, even with his blurry, incorrectly rendered face. You laughed so hard when his little butt cheeks were shown. And Kang, you were just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Listen, they did Modoc justice. That was the best Modoc ever done in live action. Oh, I mean, live action, <laughs> correct. I thought it was great. It wasn't exactly what I wanted in terms of MODOK, right? I wanted it to be that more like vicious, angry face MODOK. I think everyone did. No problem. Whatever. But like, I felt weird looking at him. Like, I didn't want to look at him. He made me feel very, very uncomfortable. Yeah. But I think MODOK in general makes you feel uncomfortable. I, I could have photoshopped it. it better than what they did. I liked what they did with his face. Because his face wasn't blurry. exactly the same. It was out of focus the whole movie because it wasn't stretched correctly. <laughs> Disagree. I think you're one of those Street Hulk haters. I think you're just hating along with the CGI, you know? It's just it's it's little just ass cheeks. I didn't need to see his little ass cheeks. That was the reason why people went to go see this movie. No. Not Kang. So I'll give you this. The origin of MODOK, I didn't hate. It fit for the MCU of taking character A, squeezing him down, and ending up in Quantum Realm and making him character B. For the MCU, sure. Not a diehard MODOK fan, because I don't think anyone actually is. <laughs> There's definitely diehard MODOK fans out there, but I agree that this was the best way to bring him into the MCU. It was fine, and we don't need more mm -hmm. of him. But attacking Cassie was ridiculous. Oh. Just the fact that, with the look in his eyes when he was fighting Cassie, took me completely out of it. Very hot take. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. She was fine. He was no, not fine. She wasn't. That's my other big problem with this movie. Yeah. The recasting of Cassie did nothing. It did not improve the character. It didn't add a new dimension. If anything, it took away from Cassie because she's a recognizable actor in other media. I mean, granted, we didn't get much of Cassie in the Avengers and the other Ant-Man movies, but we got enough to where this just wasn't her. And when she was like, the B-Man tried to kill me when I was six years, that that wasn't you bitch we know that wasn't you like one of my other biggest gripes of the movie is there was no reason to bring a higher level actress into the role if it did not improve the role at all they never called her stature they never called her stinger i got a suit too and that was it that was her character development this is the first time she's put on a suit she's not really a superhero so it should have improved her it should have added another dimension to the character it didn't she got bigger i just kind of feel like the mcu as a whole and this is like typical tiktok hate that people say it used to be like like a comic relief and now it's like every single character is comic relief the only person who wasn't in this whole movie was janet i mean for the hero side janet was right. the only one who didn't crack jokes and you expect scott to you expect cassie to say something here and there you don't mm -hmm. expect hank to that was weird all the jokes mm -hmm. that hank was making it just seemed out of character for him does the quantum realm affect their abilities because i always took it as when they're shrunk down they're stronger yeah they're supposed to be strong they were not in 
different this movie. No. Like, so. and everything they did had to be the momentum from shrinking to enlarging. The boost and jab. Yeah. So boost jab was the only attack they had, but their strength was not up to par what it's been in prior movies. So it's almost yeah. like they got nerfed. Maybe they explained it in a scene that got cut. This yeah. was definitely supposed to be a mid-phase movie. It is very clear that mm -hmm. this movie was cut in ways to make it launch phase five. That's fair. Just by the way the plot lined up because it's a generic plot and didn't give much besides there's this big bad guy. It was a fine movie that was poorly cut. You guys yeah. really didn't enjoy like the action or like they were riding amoebas and like there were some beautiful kind of scenes for sure. Like that was enjoyable but the story wasn't enjoyable. Janet's character was so goddamn weird. Like I got secrets and you could see it in my fucking eyes but I'm not going to tell you guys. Actually that's a plot hole too because mm -hmm. last time we saw her she had no issue sending people to the quantum realm which i've been like commenting on people's angry tiktoks was like oh well he who remains was killed maybe that's what inserted kang into the sacred timeline because maybe the sacred timeline was so sacred because kang wasn't in it is yeah. there one microverse or is there one microverse per branch <laughs> you know is it one place or is it within each world yeah that's the plot hole is there multiple quantum realm to that extent we need more explanation but i don't think there would be similar to the one above all mephisto scenario there's only mm. one so that's the way that they can approach it for the quantum world there's only one there's only one basement level to this whole multiple universe thing i'm bummed that you guys didn't enjoy it great movie the comedy was actually entertaining it didn't feel forced thor was like all right we're gonna attack you in every direction with just comedy this one was like all right we're gonna get the story going the story's not gonna stop for just comedy like we're gonna keep it moving so what do you compare it to at this point you're saying this is a seven it doesn't give you anything mm. compared to what what? Love and Thunder, in my opinion. I think it's better than Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder was bad plot and execution. This was bad plot, not bad execution. No, but I'm saying, like, what are you judging it against in terms of, like, Marvel? That's the worst stuff. Ant-Man like, 2. Yeah. You say Ant-Man 2 is better than this? Oh, yeah. Story-wise, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, did I prefer this just over the sci-fi factor? Yeah. For personal whatever, I think it was more entertaining. But if we're actually rating it as, like, a movie of, like, what is done well, yeah, that's better. I wouldn't give it much more, maybe an 8. I even think a 7.2 to his generous honestly now did you guys see any easter eggs whatsoever let's have it jeremiah yeah i don't know if i caught anything in the movie i didn't lord krylar is the only quote-unquote easter egg and that oh my god waste of bill murray that was a cut right like they had to cut whatever his original purpose was they had to have i did love his introduction i love janet saying that she was basically in a relationship with him because we assumed that that they had a history and when everyone's just referring to him as he that was the first time that it felt like it carried weight like we all knew who he was but with bill it seemed as though there was something more sinister and like the way that he was dispatched was humorous but what was he four minutes in the movie yeah no it was a complete waste my thing is was he gonna be the one that turned good at the end and then they decided to shove modok in this movie and they were like oh, we can't have two villains that flip on kang in the end that's a good point hell of a payday for four minutes of film it might have been just to pull people in it's like oh bill murray yeah true just that scene of taking off his glasses oh we gotta go see it but do you really need clickbait when it's mcu anymore i don't think is that popular of a character not popular like spider-man no one's gonna list Iron him as their favorite Avenger, yeah. Right. So I think your third movie, they're probably kind of nervous, like, okay, are people going to get excited about this guy Kang that don't necessarily know who Kang is, you know? So it's like, all right, let's throw Bill Murray in. Now all of a sudden it's like, oh, Bill Murray's in it. It's like, is he something bigger than yeah. he actually is? I mean, if there's right. Easter eggs, they're fucking deep cut. So let's talk about one thing. The main group, right, that finds them, that makes uh -huh. them drink. Uh, uh, with, yeah, I love that scene, by the way. That character alone, Why? funny <laughs> as hell. Like, I have holes, like... <laughs> yeah, that it's like, oh, good. I didn't know he could do that. Like, yeah, like that was just like away from the story. This is happening. <laughs> like, that was funny. But the guy that was with them, he's supposed to be like a celestial, right? There is a celestial that is in charge of the quantum world, but I don't think it's him. He died. As far as we know, his head got blasted off. I think they built this world to make it fit the name of quantum mania. Yeah, we need this outrageous world that we've been hyping up for so long. That we did that. shown and it looked completely different. That's my other big problem with this movie is like we've been introduced 
to the quantum realm before. We saw it in previous movies and it looked nothing like this. I mean, they and said so- it changed, but it doesn't really make sense to change the way it did. To bring up your point, right? You mentioned how Kang, the one who remains, he was keeping the sacred timeline safe, right? Keeping right. it away from all Kang. He died. Now all of a sudden she's afraid of the quantum realm and there's a Kang in there. To your point, she never was afraid of it before. Why all of a sudden? Maybe the storyline changed because now there is a Kang. Like there I was mean, never a sense. Kang there. Quantum realm wasn't what it was before, but now it is because Kang wasn't But then wasn't her there, relationship you know? with Bill Murray makes no sense. They were freedom fighters for what? No, that's what I'm saying. Like all that, that never happened. Either, happened. It all became because the timeline changed. Okay. There's just a line. Then all of a sudden, one who remains is gone and now Kang's so all each going crazy. So each branch mm-hmm. could be a Kang. And whatever branch we're in, thickest one, let's say, this is what we're getting now. So the original timeline doesn't even exist anymore. That's the best thing theory yes. but i would have loved yes. a hint of that i would have loved for them to tell us this because us making it up doesn't make me feel good <laughs> you're right i can appreciate wanting a hint of it but maybe that's what we're supposed to be doing now let's discuss the first after credit scene the council of kang scene is taken directly from a splash page since you didn't read my notes jeremiah do you know what issue don't look down if you look down and cheating it's an avengers Wait, issue what? it's an avengers issue 282 292 oh uh- <laughs> <laughs> Very good has already gone up in price on eBay. The two of you named the three kings that were oh. the big wigs. Yes, maybe. Rama so Ramatut, Ramatut, Red something, Scarlet Centurion, <laughs> Scarlet Centurion. Yep. That's the one I thought you were gonna fuck up on. I don't even remember what the last Eternus? one looked like. Eternus, Eternus, Immortus, Immortus. Immortus. Close enough. <laughs> Can we just talk that Jonathan Majors looks fucking disgustingly awesome as Immortus? The character design for Immortus and even Ramatut and even Scarlet Centurion are fucking great. There's a Skrull King we saw. Uh, How does that cool. work? Different timeline. Skrulls eventually took over everything. Okay, I'll take it. I oh, think I would have. No. Preferred- if every movie we just got a different Kang. That's right? what's happening. And now we've seen three of them. The three but, big ones. Yeah. Next I to the Conqueror. You're gonna get. Right. I kind of wish we didn't see them yet. And that every MC movie we walk into, it's like, which version are we going to get? We know we're getting a Kang yeah. villain, but which version? You're going to get it in the trailers one way or another. They're yeah, not going to hold I don't back. Know. Where's Ramatut going to be? Fantastic Four. Four. Even though this movie technically was a Fantastic Four movie. Yeah, for sure. So there's a TikToker. I was thinking about inviting her for this one but she's like way too smart for us and i got intimidated not franklin's herald on tiktok you've probably seen her yeah um, i know who you're talking about huge huge fantastic four fan but she said that you can well, see where they could just plug and play with the fantastic yeah, four and yeah i can still see them visiting the quantum realm yeah there's I no guess. reason for them not to the quantum realm this... has been determined that it is the thing for time travel so you might still see bill murray again it's not like he died I mean, modok they I turn he's dead. they turn right <laughs> at his flatlining so it's very possible that he's still alive they confirm when people die it's like very obvious like the one guy that got his head blasted off there was a whole scene where everyone just like it pauses and she's just watching the smoke come from his head like he's gone so Mm. modok though they turn around after joking so i doubt he's dead yes he was comedic relief the whole movie but i doubt that's the way he's just gonna go the guy with holes even he survived do you think we're really gonna get the quantum realm or bill murray or modok again i I mean the movie wasn't received that well why would we get them again because they're still big characters like modok is a huge character in the comics sure lord krylar maybe not but i think they'll eventually go back down there and not to mention kang's not dead we act like he just died he didn't he gets sucked into his own like portal thing he's still down there i don't know exactly know where but like you know he's there that was my complaint too that i kind of felt like they burned kang the conqueror on this throwaway movie and turned it into a setup movie like to me that should be the prime Kang that we build up to. That is a little bit of him here and there. And we got a whole lot of him and he was defeated. He shouldn't have been defeated. He shouldn't have had that big of a part. It should have been some other Kang. He should have been the Thanos level Kang. He shouldn't have gotten his ass beat by Ant-Man and Wasp. (laughs) I think it's just going to give him more of a reason to come back and be like, fuck you guys. And just kick ass. He killed Thor in his own like timeline. He mentioned that. (laughs) Rather see that when the time comes, not in this theatrical comedy what kang would you like to see die in this or defeated i don't know i guess just like a dumbed down conqueror version like not a clean cut one this one had all the stunts all the tech badass suit all of it i would have rather seen like a i'm living in the woods for 20 years version of him like raggedy and just like ripped clothes and more like i don't know just not that powerful like maybe the armies make sense he builds a following because he's so knowledgeable from being in all different timelines but like he was what you expect kang to be again literally the perfect 
perfect Kang the Conqueror, just not where I wanted him. Like, yeah, it's only the battle, but he's still lost. <laughs> like, I wasn't ready for him to lose at all. I agree with you now, now that I think about it, yeah. I don't know if I'm explaining it correctly, in the sense that, like, they didn't waste him, they just gave us too much of him, and he was perfect in a not-so-perfect movie. Yeah. Did anyone else buy the book, Look Out for the Little Guy? What do you mean, buy the book? It's on Amazon. I ordered it. It comes out in September. <laughs> I don't know what's in the book. <laughs> I don't know if there's real words. It's just like... I know like, the end of the book. <laughs> it, it was like 30 bucks. On what website? Amazon. A Disney product? It says author Scott Lang. Did you just get totally taken no. on Amazon? It's a thing. I'm telling you. I bought it. Look out for the little guy by Scott Lang. Yeah. It is a number one bestseller right now in superheroes and science fiction. It's actually on sale. Hopefully they reimburse me. This is ridiculous. I, this is cool. I, I don't know, but I feel market. like I have to buy it now too. I'm more so just curious of what it is is i'm gonna go ahead and pre-order it okay wait there's yeah. a kindle edition if there's yeah. a kindle edition there has to be words hyperion avenue is the publisher like the character hyperion give us more give us more who is hyperion why is he relevant let's go he's definitely squadron not. supreme he is the superman quote-unquote of squadron supreme when roy thomas came over from dc to marvel he copied the justice league and made different evil versions of all their characters hyperion is the superman version hyperion's uh, coming from <laughs> i hope so so which kang are we getting next and what is the next movie now that i asked that question next movie is guardians we're not getting a kang we're getting high evolutionary so to go with that theme it would be the scarlet centurion if any i think it is a scarlet centurion how about that because the high evolutionary kind of looks like the scarlet centurion so mm. maybe he is attempting to build things better to emulate the best person he ever saw being the scarlet centurion what movie comes I... after guardians marvels we're not gonna get kang and marvels i mean we could at the tail end we could get the beginning of Immortus. so the scarlet mm. centurion right i think that's high evolutionary audience. i think yeah i think it's actually him like it's literally him face the face off the body i see what you're saying it 100%. looks like a mask it looks like a mask but we see the high evolutionary as his human self before he experimented on himself but i just feel like there's something behind that maybe they're just friends <laughs> <laughs> they could be. They shop at the same gap. Yeah. I just feel like whether it's Kang or not Kang, it's a mask. It's coming off. I'm calling it now. Whatever's behind it, whether it's a more accurate high evolutionary. I hope so. That'd be fucking dope. But yeah, I, I am in your really camp that. here. I'm in your camp. I am stoking your fire. Or it's Kang just behind it. Like it's just going to rip off at the end. Not at all. Like another not. Kang. I hope not. So something that I'm unaware of, and maybe one of you can fill me in on the second end credit scene. Who the fuck's that? Pierre, you leaked it. So it's only right that you explain. All right. There's a timeline. Kang goes back, becomes the mayor of a town in like the 1930s. His name is Victor Timely. So he just replaces himself. So it doesn't look like it's the same person still living. So he's just like Victor Timely the second, Victor Timely the third. Yeah. It's just a long lineage of the same person. And during that time, he takes control of the human torch, the original one, just saying, what is the last name a reference to? Miss Minutes. Nice. Solid answer. <laughs> what is the name of the original company of Marvel? Timely Comics. Oh, that sucks. That wasn't as exciting as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't aware of Victor Timely. This is something new to me. I thought for a second, I went back to 1872, that miniseries that was in Secret Wars. That was oh. fucking dope. Was he the mayor of that town? Because if that's where oh. we're going, that'd be so sick if we get. Oh, I don't want that in Loki. Loki no. season two, 1872. Let's fucking go. No, I don't want that in Loki. That's going to be its own thing. That was so perfect. 1872? That? No. That's not 1872. It was so good, though. Oh. It was one of my favorite miniseries ever. Victor Timely Kang is just giving us the Loki villain to tease the next Loki season. That's absolutely all this is, and he will be defeated by the end of Loki season two. Jerry Duggan. Yeah. Really? Explains why it's yeah. what it is. Yeah, that makes sense. So I think what you're going to see through the Victor Timely character is you're going to see him go through the generations still being Victor Timely. So one of the set photos was like an older, like 70s McDonald's. You know, like, oh, 20 years down the road, it's still Victor Timely. And, like, they're still fighting this battle, like, through the different, like, time period. There's a lot of Kangs, and this is what to expect moving forward in most movies. Same as what Thanos was at the end of Avengers. This is what to expect moving forward. Everything's going to be somewhat connected to this scene. And I think the second scene is just simply setting up Loki. Just basically saying, here's the next one you're probably going to see on a screen. All right, so I want to just put the final nail into why this wasn't a good movie for you, Pierre. And then Jeremiah's going to be like, oh, yeah, wait a minute, you're right. Let me take a point away. You know how like Ant-Man and 
Ant-Man and the Wasp had like supporting cast that like wasn't a bunch of like relatives. Where are his friends? Bring him to the quantum realm? No, but they could have at least had him getting coffee or something with him. No, they have him walking around. Yeah, he gets coffee with Jimmy Woo. Exactly. The Holes guy, whatever his name is, he's actually voiced by one of the friends. Are you saying that or do you know that? No, I know that. I'm not making that Okay. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we gotta check. Um, He's voiced by, I forgot the white guy's name. I mean, Uh, listen, does that make me feel a little better? But anyway, that guy. But they could have had some other reference to them instead of playing with magic. They didn't need that little scene. They could have done it with the friends. Who knows? Maybe it was some kind of scheduling issue. But to rate the Ant-Man trilogy as a whole, that's averaging your three scores of the three movies, what you believe you would give it as a whole. Pierre, you give everything 10, so I'm expecting you just to say 10. So if I were to take all three of them and then Mm -hmm. give them a grade, give it a 10. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Ant-Man 1 is a solid 9. Ant-Man 2 is a solid 8. Quantum Mania is a solid seven so as a trilogy i would grade it as an eight slightly yeah. skewing a little more because of how good the first one was so i would say the same with the eight but slightly skewing under an eight maybe like because of quantum media like i enjoyed it like don't get me wrong like you're supposed to be entertained by a movie but you sell us on how many years of mcu movies that are all connected one of the and... ways that i like to grade a movie is would i pay to see it again and i won't but mm. entertainment factor yeah that's what's giving it that seven for me the story just didn't do it panel eats podcast panel eats podcast panel eats podcast he's pretending to be frozen yeah i'm shocked panel eats podcast pure honest to god a 10 mm-hmm. really no, I would have given it like a four, but I didn't want to bring you guys oh, down. <laughs> Palette's podcast. Well, gentlemen, thank you for chatting. Great episode. For me and Pierre, it was. <laughs> Fun time. You're still recording, by the way. <laughs>